Uh, you will need a Bible today. If you didn't bring one along with you, find one in the seat in front of you. I think you're welcome to take those home. If we go missing all the Bibles, it's Jeff's fault. So, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm glad to be preaching this morning. Kent, you did a great job last week uh, with that message on, on the way. Uh, appreciated that and help us understand this a little bit more uh, today. Jeff is talking about discipleship, yeah, following Jesus. So that is one of the incentives. That is one of the priorities that uh, the church has been focused on. It should be tr- a church should be focused on that. Every church should be focused on uh, discipleship and, and evangelism and the next generation. These are incentives that every church ought to be uh, working on, and Cornerstone is, is doing that. And today, uh, we're going to look at the difference between being a follower and an influencer. I, I am not a social media expert. I, I think that you've figured that out. I, I don't have a lot of social... I don't even have Facebook anymore. Uh, I joined Facebook when it was called The Facebook, and I got out of Facebook when that everybody was just fighting with each other on Facebook. So I uh, don't even have Facebook. But there's a difference between an influencer and a follower. Now, if you've got Facebook, you probably are, uh, you have followers. Uh, it, I, I have a, a friend of mine that is, uh, his wife is an influencer, and um, she makes a little over a million dollars a year uh, changing their clothes and taking pictures of those clothes. If you change four times a day and take pictures of that and post that online, you could make a million dollars. That's an influencer. So I think sometimes instead of being followers of Jesus, we want to become influencers. And there's a big difference between the two of those. I'm not even so sure that uh, when I, I remember that meme that came out, one of the first memes that I ever saw on the internet, and it was through, through Facebook, uh, but uh, it, it had a picture of Jesus sitting on a bench with a, a modern guy. You know, they're sitting uh, underneath an autumn picture, and Jesus says, uh, when I told you I wanted you to be my follower, I did not mean on Facebook. <laughs> so, kinda. There's a big difference. And, and if you've got five followers on Facebook, that's not a big deal. But if you've got five followers in a dark alley, <laughs> five is a big deal. That's a, that's a large number. So uh, we're, we're looking at emphasizing in our lives our walk with Jesus and checking that and being aware of, of how we're doing following uh, Christ. Um, and, and we should be followers of, of Jesus Christ. If you're out there just uh, following your dreams and you think, I'm just going to keep on following my dreams, yet, uh, go ahead and do that. Follow your dreams, but realize that somebody may file a restraining order against you for following your dreams. Jesus calls not only the twelve, but all of us to discipleship. And today, uh, we're going to define that a little better and understand it somewhat so uh, that we understand that all believers are are disciples. We'll look into God's Word and cover some uh, key things so that we might become better followers of Jesus. Does anybody want to be a better follower of Jesus? Hey, does anybody want to be Jesus's influencer? Well, I'm the only one with my hand up, right? <laughs> no, Jeff doesn't even want to be an influencer uh, of Jesus. I want Jesus to influence me. So our text today, um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. And for those of you who've been in uh, Kent's Bible study a few months ago on Colossians. You dealt with this passage of Scripture, so you should be familiar with it. Listen to to what it says, because this is the essence of discipleship. Paul says, He is the one whom we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. So Paul preached Christ, people became mature. There's a connection there. When we preach Jesus, people grow up. So right now you are in a sense being discipled, but we're going to look and uh, begin with what 
what is discipleship? The better understanding of what discipleship is. It is the way that we follow. It's everything that we do after we become uh, a believer. And sometimes we're not following as closely as others, right? And, and we could all do a little bit better uh, following Jesus. Uh, several months ago, I, I remember mentioning when I was preaching that I think Kent is assigning to me passages that are a little controversial or difficult. <laughs> He's assigning to me stuff that he didn't really want. No, that, that's not actually the case. But I got to thinking... You know, maybe he's got it up his sleeve that I'm going to get Jeff up there to talk about growing up in Christ because he has no idea what he's doing. And sometimes I do feel like I have no idea what I'm doing following Jesus. Uh, I, I, if you assess yourself this morning, maybe you'll think, I sure could do better in respect to following the Lord Jesus Christ. It is, it is a journey. It's not a destination, you know. We're every day being discipled. Little things that happen to us are actually discipling us. Things are pulling us either further away from Jesus or closer to Him. Uh, it, discipleship is about sanctification. Oh, that's a big church word. We only use that word at church, by the way. And it just simply means that we're becoming more holy. We're becoming more like Jesus. We're getting uh, rid of sin in our lives and we're taking on in our lives a more uh, holy uh, approach. We're trying to do better every day. And I, I don't know about you, but I'll be very honest. Sometimes it is five steps forward and ten steps back. It's very discouraging sometimes. Uh, sometimes things that I face cause me to not follow Jesus as closely as I should. Sometimes the things that I face, I have no place else to go but to Jesus. And those situations drive me to my knees. And they are frustrating. But I have no place to turn but to Jesus Christ. Following Jesus helps some of His holiness to rub off on us, uh, abiding with Him every day, being in close proximity to Him, maturing and growing up in Jesus. This is what discipleship is. And although it's a very personal thing, it is something that helps if we do it together. We grow up together and help one another along the way, because you may have figured something out that I haven't figured out yet, or I may have figured something out that you haven't figured out, and it helps us to share our lives with one another. Uh, we learn from our own mistakes, but I can also learn from some of the mistakes that you've made, and from some of the mistakes that people have made in the Scripture, of course. Now, uh, when we talk about discipleship, before we get too deep in this, I don't want you to confuse following Jesus with uh, professing Christianity. That's not the same thing. A lot of people profess to follow Jesus Christ, but Jesus doesn't, you know, remember uh, Jesus said these words. Uh, people said, hey, didn't we drive out demons in your name? Now, that's a pretty big accomplishment. Um, I don't know if you've actually done that, but these people came to Jesus and they said, hey, we're doing some great things for the kingdom. We're driving out demons. And Jesus responded to them and said, depart from me. I don't know who you are. They weren't following. You know, they could do great things for, they thought, for the kingdom, but they weren't following Jesus and that was what they needed to do. Don't confuse discipleship for professing Christianity. And don't confuse discipleship for attending church. You can attend church and not follow Jesus. We should be clear that you can come to church every Sunday and still not follow the Lord Jesus. I don't know how. You, I hope that you are made very uncomfortable if you're trying that business here, right? I hope you're made very uncomfortable. But a lot of people think that they can... Follow Jesus on their own terms. You know, I'm going to follow. You remember uh, Peter, uh, after 
during Jesus' arrest and trial, uh, Peter is watching what's happening. John is watching what's happening. John is a little closer to the perspective than Peter is. Peter, the scripture even says, he was following Jesus at a distance. Boy, does that sum up a lot lot of discipleship. Following Jesus at a distance. (laughs) At a safe distance. You know, we don't want to be one of those crazy uh, Christians. Uh, We're all following Jesus. And, and we're following him on his terms. But we're all at different stages of following him. You know, some people um, have been babies, you know, infants, uh, for years. And this doesn't, you don't have to grow up in 10 years. You could, you could stay a baby for 30 years of your Christian life. All of your Christian life, you're just an infant People come take care of you, put, put a little bottle in your mouth and feed you a little nourishment from God's Word. And then they have to change your diapers and make sure that you don't hurt yourself in some way or another. Stop scratching your face. You're going you're gonna to harm yourself in some way. Some people just don't want to grow up. Uh, other people have had their growth stunted by something. And they can't. They have to get over that first and be healed from that, and then, then they can go on and, and grow on. Some people are stuck in puberty and act like teenagers. All they want to do is be in a bad mood all of the time. I talked to somebody this morning that all the time I see her, she's always smiling, she's always kind, she's always pleasant, and I said, are you always this nice? And she said, yeah, pretty much I am. So I, I figured that out. Somebody at the church, you, you'll have to figure that out on your own who it is. But some people just want to fight about things all the time. And they're stuck in puberty. Uh, some people are actually caring for these infants at, at church. And, and we're pacifying them and patting them on the back. Instead of saying to them, hey, why don't you grow up a little bit in Jesus? Uh, I like the passage in Hebrews. I didn't put that down here for you to read, but I like the passage in Hebrews that says, you, Paul says, you need to move on past these things. And he lists a bunch of things that he says, these are all remedial things. These are all baby things. These are small childlike things. These, these are all doc, doctrines that are, and, and you read through some of those doctrines that he's mentioning and you think, wow. I must still be a child in the faith because these seem like hard concepts uh, to me. All of us are at different places. Some people are going to be immature all the time. You know, I don't want to grow up. I like to be, I would like to be immature. But when it comes to Jesus, we should grow up in Christ. And we're all at different stages, various stages. But we hear all, all of us hear these words from the Master. He called out to the crowd along with his disciples. And he said, see, this, this not only went to the 12, but this went to a crowd of people. I know you're thinking, oh, well, he did say that to the 12, but he doesn't really say that to me. Wrong. He says this to all of us. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross. And another text says, take up their cross daily, and follow me. That's what discipleship is. It's not always pleasant growing up. Well, I'd like to stay young all my life. I'd like to not have to grow up. I'd like to act immature. Well, that's, there's just no place for that in the church. And, and I would say, I've said this before, but somebody prove me wrong, please. All of the troubles that are experienced on earth in the church are a result of people being immature. If we would just grow up in Christ, it would be a lot easier. But I don't want to grow up. Too many responsibilities. You know, this, this discipleship, this can be found throughout the Bible. And I like a passage that I found in the Old Testament that I think shows you what discipleship is. So this is discipleship in the Old Testament. Listen to these words of Joshua. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods of your ancestors that they served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in the land to whom you are in the land in whose land you are living but as for me and my household we will serve the Lord that's discipleship making a choice to follow Jesus and then following through by actually following Jesus not trying to convince Jesus to follow you bad idea but following Jesus so now that you know what a disciple is maybe a little better how are we discipled what things in your life help you to become more mature and more Christ-like we're gonna cover a few of those things and although uh, it can be done alone and we are responsible each of us will stand before the Lord and give an account for every careless word that we have spoken can you believe that that's scary isn't it but we're all individuals we'll all stand before God uh, uh, and and have to answer for how we were following Jesus but you can do this with other people this is something that we can do in in your small group uh, in and you don't have to officially be in a small group and it titled a small group. You could have a small group of people that are helping you to grow up in Christ, helping you to be accountable, helping you to follow Jesus more closely. So I, I picked three areas, three areas of focus for discipleship. And by the way, these are three areas that we're going to hit with uh, uh, resources to you. And they're already out on, on the web page on the internet if you've been searching through discipleship, you're going to find these. And this isn't real controversial either. Check your prayer life. Check your prayer life. What's your prayer life like? Oh, well, that's a very personal question. Yeah, I know. It was a very personal question for me too. Who, who do you talk to throughout the day? Do you talk to friends? Uh, my wife's been out of town up planning her dad's uh, funeral service, so she's, uh, the house has been kind of quiet the last few days. And I'm not saying that she talks, but, but after going all day without talking to anyone at all, you start to realize that uh, it's nice to talk to people from time to time. And in fact, if you care about people, you talk to them, right? Uh, throughout the week, how many people do you actually have a conversation with? Even count your text messages even. That, that's, that's a conversation, sort of. I would imagine you talk a lot. Now, I'm not saying that just my wife talks a lot, but even, even I talk a lot. I want to carry on a conversation with people that I know and love, and you probably do too. Do you carry on a conversation with God? Have you been praying as much as you've been talking to other people? I think we could probably say that a lot of our problems exist because we go and talk to other people about our problems rather than going to God and talking to Him about our problems. How often do you pray? Are your prayers balanced out? You've heard the, the acts. Uh, it helps us, a little acrostic helps us to remember to have a balanced prayer life. That it, it shouldn't just be focused on asking for things. God, give me a pony. God, I want a Mercedes. God, I need a Rolex. Who was the lady that did the, the song about praying for a Mercedes? Joan, not Joan Baez. Janice Joplin, thank you. <laughs> Whoever thought we'd be using her name. Uh, so one of the first areas of prayer is adoration. And, and this is one area that we don't do a lot of. This is worship. And, and at church, we should be adoring and lifting up and praising God for who He is. Um, in, in my own prayer life, that's usually how I start, just by acknowledging how majestic God is, how sovereign He is, and praising Him. Uh, and this can be done by yourself or with others. Hopefully today in worship, see this is one of the ways that disciples gather together in worship and we offer up praise to God together, which is a good thing. And staying at home and deciding, yeah, I don't really like getting in a crowd and praising God together. Adoration is a part of our prayer life and it should remain 
a large part of our prayer life. Confession is part of our prayer life. And we need to take our sins. This is an important part about discipleship. Constantly coming before God and acknowledging that we're sinners in need of a Savior. Confession is important. If you're sinless, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're a sinner, we need to confess our sins and know that He will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thanksgiving is another part of our prayer life that we should check and make sure that we're thanking God. Um, But, you know, the Bible tells us to thank God in all things. So when you have plenty, you should thank God. And when you are in want, you should thank God. When things are going great, you should thank God. And when things are not going so great, you should thank God. Thanksgiving is part of our prayer life. And you need to check your prayer life. Another important part, if we follow the little acts thing, is supplication. And I think that it is fine for you to take to to God your needs. It shows our dependence upon Him. And if we constantly depend on Him, then we should constantly take our needs to Him. And they shouldn't be frivolous, ridiculous needs like I need a pony or I need a Mercedes or I need a a big uh, F-10 or whatever, F-150. I don't don't know what the trucks are. Those are Fords, right? F anything. 150. 150, 155. I don't know what it takes. Uh, The Bible says that we should pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. That's one that you could memorize. It might be hard, but I'm all for putting the Bible to memory. Um, Pray without ceasing. It should be a constant thing. When you're driving, don't close your eyes. You think you you, want to pray to Jesus or do you want to talk to Him face to face? Don't close your eyes. You can pray while you're driving. You can pray with people in a car. One of the weirdest things is praying over the phone. It's just a weird thing for me. I think, I'm praying over the phone. I can't even hold your hand. But, you know, praying over the phone is even okay, right? Uh, prayer, what, what is your prayer life like? It says a lot about how you're following if we measure how you're talking to Jesus. But prayer isn't the only thing that we ought to check. We ought also check how we are studying God's Word. And when I say studying God's Word, I don't mean like Jeff and Kent, you know, rip God's Word um, down to the Greek and then parse it out and figure out if it's an aorist or if it's a present tense and all, all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about studying God's Word so you know how to live. So you know what Jesus asks of us. Studying God's Word. It's not just about information, gathering a bunch of information and making us smart so everybody knows that we're doing a great job in our walk with Christ. Meditation of God's Word is is important. Uh, Meditating on God's Word, thinking about God's Word, making it a part of our lives. Uh, I think one time we looked at the Shema in the Old Testament and uh, Genesis and and saw God, uh, or I'm sorry, Deuteronomy, and saw that God was asking people to take his word and to wrap it around their wrist and to bind it on their forehead. And and the the Jews made all kinds of ridiculous uh, gestures about that, and they kind of missed the point. Meditating on God's word, memorizing it, making it a part of our lives so that it comes to our mind, especially in times of trouble. Why, if you do this, you know, daily devotions, and and by the way, we want to put some resources out there, make them available for you for daily devotions on the internet. That's part of the way, you know, we want want you to be able to do daily devotions. If, If you don't like one daily devotion on the internet, there are a lot of options, but there's always the Bible, you know. If you don't, if you have dial up, and you don't want to get on the internet, you know, you could still study God's Word, the old-fashioned way, from the book when you read it. And, and, you know, there are a lot of helps to study God's Word, books and 
public. I got a whole garage full of helps to study God's Word, but it doesn't substitute for God's Word, right? Pull God's Word aside and start consuming it and understanding it. You can realize right from wrong when you study God's Word. And, and you can put away sin in your own life and start living a little more like Jesus, following Him a little closer. You know this passage that, that calls upon us to make study an important part of discipleship. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, but who correctly handles this word of truth. Correctly handling, dividing, parsing, teaching, understanding, and living God's word. Boy, it'd be a shame if we just knew God's word and didn't put it into practice. How silly do you think that'd be? Oh, you know all these things and they're in your head and you can quote the scripture, but the devil quoted the scripture too. Being a disciple is not just about filling our head with a wealth of information from your study Bible or from your commentary or from some magnificent book that some preacher has written, but studying so that it might have an effect in your life. It might change the way that you live. It might make you live a little more holy. It might cause you to reach out to other people. It might cause you to do things that you're uncomfortable doing, but a follower of Jesus would do those things. Check your life of study. Your prayer life, your study life, and, and lastly, how are you doing serving others? Because that's a big part of discipleship, serving others. Uh, oh yeah, you can serve in the church, but you can serve also in, at home. You can serve in, in, in the place that you work. You can serve out on the golf course. You can serve in a lot of areas. Will you? Are you? Or are you going to say, mm, no, I, I, I joined this whole Christianity thing so that people would serve me. Wow, you completely missed the point. Remember Jesus' words, the greatest among you will be your servant. Now, if we want to follow the master, and the master was a servant, then we need to serve one another. In, in a community of faith, and, and the Bible talks about this all the time, there are all kinds of verses about, especially to the brothers and sisters in Christ, you want to do this. You know, serving and taking care of each other in a community of faith is an important part of discipleship. And, and I, I, I suppose there are people that say, well, I, you know, I, I'm a follower of Jesus, I just don't want to connect to, I don't want to affiliate with the church. Well, the devil didn't affiliate with the church either. Uh, he, he's diametrically opposed to it, and I suppose you're in bad company if you make a decision like that. Not only should we share our lives in a community of faith, but you also need to share your life out in a world that's lost and dying in their sin and needs Jesus desperately, and sometimes you need to be the one to tell them that. Yes, disciples evangelize, but I don't want to get into that because that's next week. Disciples have to evangelize. Serving Jesus should be natural to us. But what else do we need to know about discipleship? What are some important things? And lastly, the last thing I want to leave you with this morning is what happens when you are growing in Christ? You, you don't have to grow up. You don't have to uh, be fully mature in Jesus. By the way, what does that look like? Well, it looks like Jesus. It looks a lot like Jesus. Uh, but on me, I don't know. It's kind of strange because I'm not there yet. We never reach perfection. And uh, w discipleship is a process. It's a journey. It's always happening to us. It happens from the time that we're born again until the time that we meet face to face with our Lord. What are the results? Well, let me first of all tell you that the results of not following Jesus, the consequences of not following Jesus are far more terrible and tragic than following Him. I know following Jesus, you'll have trouble in this world. You will. But not following Him is an even greater loss and trouble. Following Jesus, 
You have several things that will happen in your life. Let me, let me go over a few of them. First of all, the one thing that happens is instead of wanting less of Jesus, you begin to, to desire more of Him. When you are growing up in Christ, and, and you'd think that the opposite would be true. Well, you know, I've spent a lot of time praying and a lot of time studying and a lot of time serving. I'm going to take me a break for a little while. Um, no, it actually creates a desire to have more of Christ and to know Him better and to hunger more for Jesus. You want more of Jesus in your life, not less of Him. As I follow Jesus, another thing happens. I begin to understand God's nature a little bit better. I, I begin to see what God does. Now, I don't fully understand God. I don't think we can. But I begin to understand how His will is and how He operates a little bit better when, so that when tragedy uh, strikes in, in my life, I have a better grasp, a better coping mechanism, a better way to understand that tragedy that's happened in my life. You, you do. You understand things a little bit better if you are growing up in Christ Jesus. Another thing that happens when you are growing in Christ Jesus, you are developing a deeper compassion and mercy for the lost. Following Jesus doesn't make you hateful. It makes you grateful. Following Jesus doesn't make you argue with people better. It makes you understand the depth of their depravity and loss. You want to be merciful and compassionate because you're growing and becoming more like Christ. As I follow Jesus, I'm, I'm becoming more humble and I want to serve more and do more for the kingdom, not less for the kingdom. As I follow Jesus, I'm becoming less worldly and less interested in worldly things to the point where I would prefer to, to ignore those things wholly or, uh, in, in this world, to ignore them completely and pursue righteousness in my life. That happens when you are growing in Christ and, and becoming a better disciple. Uh, another thing that happens is you are put at odds with this world. If you are growing in Christ and becoming a disciple, you are hated by this world. It's a natural thing. And you know why? Because they first hated Jesus. And if you're going to grow up and follow Him, you're going to be hated. Another thing that just seems to happen whenever you're following Jesus is you have the hope and promise of eternal life. You're not earning it. Jesus did all that you need done on the cross. And you're following Him. And so you have the hope of the promises of heaven. You are pleasing God. And you are bringing glory to Jesus Christ. Which is one of the missions of the church. To bring glory to God and people to Jesus, right? You are bringing glory to God as you're growing in Christ. Happy and content. Blessed are those who will be disciples of Jesus Christ. He calls us to be disciples. If today you misunderstood that and thought maybe he meant he's looking for influencers. Well, just hold off. He's looking for followers. And he doesn't need to see a picture of your dinner to do it. I, I don't understand why people put pictures of what they're getting ready to eat on the internet. That, that makes me hungry. I, I don't know about you, but it makes me hungry. But I, it's a ridiculous thing that people do and try to make themselves look normal, I guess. So I'm eating this meal, but then who makes their plate to look like that, right? That's for a picture. It's not artwork. Uh, a quote, I had a quote from Billy Graham up there. Uh, Salvation, he said, is free. But discipleship, hmm, that costs us everything. Hard to come to grips with that. Following Jesus is not the easiest path. It is a very narrow path. It's the only path to life. And today, if you're 
following Jesus, I commend you and I want to give you resources and I want to encourage you in that walk with Christ. But if your walk with Jesus only involves pictures on the internet of your food, you can go deeper and you can go further and you can grow up. How are you today doing in your walk? with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God Almighty is our desire to follow your son Jesus to the fullest. Following him, we know, will bring upon us hatred from this world. We'll be put at enmity with all that our society holds dear. God, help us to love the promise of heaven more than the acceptance of this world. God, help us to follow your son Jesus, not only whenever it's easy in church with other believers, but when it's difficult to follow, when we find ourselves out among the enemy. Lord, cause us to follow your son Jesus deeply that you might be glorified and others might be brought to Christ. For we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.